Before we start this video, a large thank you to Nathan, Andrew, Phil, Dren, Vladimir, Jewel, Noah, Always, and Emery for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support of the channel this month on Patreon. It is sincerely appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello everybody, today I'm going to cover some optimization techniques. You also might have noticed since upgrading to Netcode 2.2, you cannot start two hosts at the same time. Do not worry, in the next video I'm going to show how to get around that, and also we're going to test our netcode to see if anything else is broken after updating to 2.2 by connecting another client. And here's a quick before and after of our block out and then our level design. Now keep in mind, I didn't fully set dress the map or decorate it. I could have spent a lot more time on this. It does look a little plain, uh, but I just wanted to set up a general atmosphere just to show you some basic uh, design philosophies and also some lighting, but I could definitely add a lot more to this. Uh, so here we have the upstairs and then you can transition. You can see here I have a staircase, some props set up, barrels, and then I have uh, what I just thought to be like a forge room in here. And here we have the dungeon area that I was going to make locked from this side that you have to go through the basement to access. And here you can put an item on the other side of this gate right here to make the players see it and wonder how to get there. And then here is the entrance to the boss room before. And here it is after. You can see here I have the boss illuminated by two brazers here. So he is the centerpiece of attention as you walk in. Now let's start with the optimization. So the first thing we're going to start with is a thing called occlusion culling. You can find this by going to window and then rendering and then occlusion culling, but we'll get to that in a second. What exactly does it do? Well, the basic idea behind it is that if something is not in your camera's view and is obstructed by another object, these two objects have to be static for this to work. If you're using Unity's occlusion, uh, occlusion rather, then the object won't be rendered. So basically, Picture this, you're standing in a room, and then there's another room beyond this room, but there's a wall between it, so you can't actually see it. Now, if you don't have occlusion calling baked in your scene, uh, this room will render even though you're not looking at it, and this is just a waste of memory. You can imagine how bad this is going to be if you have a very massive scene. So, in short and simply, uh, occlusion calling takes the static objects that aren't in view of your camera and disables their renderers to save memory. This is one of the most effort-free things you can do to get uh, optimization in your scene because it's just a few clicks and I'll show you how to set it up right now. Okay, come over into your project. You can see here I have the full map and all of this stuff is being rendered even though my camera can only see what's directly ahead of me. I can't see beyond this hallway back here or the forge to my left. So if I go over here now and I stop the game, I'm gonna go over to window and then rendering and then occlusion calling right here which opens up a tab. Now it's got some settings. If you go to bake, you can hover over the smallest occluder. This is basically the object size in meters, I believe. Yes, yeah, so the size of the smallest object that will be used to hide other objects. So I believe this again is in meters, it is. So five, five meters would be your smallest object. Um, I'm gonna lower that a little bit so we can have smaller objects hiding other objects. We'll say three. And the smallest hole is the smallest hole in the geometry uh, through which the camera is supposed to see. So as you can imagine, the smaller these two numbers, the more stuff will be occluded by other objects, but keep in mind it will increase your bake time. So when we have that done, we do bake. You can see here now, if I jump back into the game, uh, all of these rooms over here to the left and to the right are completely hidden. If I go in my game view, nothing has actually changed. Everything looks exactly the same to me. So as I'm basically turning these corners, I'll go back to scene view again. You can see the camera is looking here. Everything behind me is also now hidden. So this is going to disable a lot of renderers uh, and in turn is going to save a lot of memory. Again, the bigger the scene, the more objects, the more impact this is going to have. So this is a great way, but we can also compound this effect even more because for example, the renders I have on screen right now, I'm just gonna pause the game and stop it. The renders I have on screen right now are being rendered in their full detail if you don't have anything called an LOD, which is a level of detail. And basically, if you have models or assets that have a lot of vertices and a lot of detail in them in the geo, you don't need all of that detail to be displayed if you're further away because it's just a waste. You can't see it anyway. This is where level of detail comes in, or as it's commonly called, uh, LODs. I'm sure you've probably heard of them. Basically, you can create variations of a model, and depending on how close or how far away you are, it will display one of your variations. So if you have a model that's very, very high in vert counts and the geo is very complex, if you have a lot of these on the screen, uh, even if you know you have some of them disabled, this can really tank your FPS as well because it's taking a lot to render this. Now the solution to this is to use an LOD and to render more simplistic versions as you get further away and only render the very high detail version if you're very close. Now if you don't want to make LODs yourself of the models, there are actually quite a few automated tools on the asset store. 
I won't speak on any because I don't have extensive experience with more than like one. Uh, so if you want to take a look, there are tools that can basically take a model and then auto generate LODs based on what you give it. Now, keep in mind that if you manually do this and you have the skill set to do so, it's probably almost always going to be better. But I've seen a lot of the auto generated models, especially with more simple geo, they look really good. Now, with that being said, let's jump into the game. I will show you how to set up an LOD. So here I have a model from Nephilim, it's a mimic, and you can see there's LODs for the body and the chest. So what you want to do is go to the main game object and add an LOD group. So we can just go to the mimic here and I will add LOD group. Now you can make as many as you want for LODs. I have three, so I'm going to use zero, one, and two. And I'm going to drag in the mimic body zero on zero, the body one on LOD one, and then the body two on LOD two. Like I said, you're free to add more LODs. I just have three, so I'm good. Now I don't need to add another LOD component for the chest. All I need to do is go up and hit this plus icon here under each LOD zero, one, and two, and just add in the chest as well. And that will auto sort that out for me. So basically now it's going to disable the renderer on uh, the other ones, depending on which distance I'm in. So you can see the camera icon moving from one to two to zero here. Depending on where I'm at, how close the camera's at, it will disable the other renderers and enable the renderers on that LOD state. And cull just means it's gone. So you can see here, I'll make it bigger so you can see. If I go to the cold viewpoint, uh, the model just disappears. So this is really helpful too. It just completely takes it out of the render and uh, it's not using up anything in terms of memory for rendering. Now, I'm going to make this LOD, since this is more of a complex model, I want lots of detail on the on the first zone here, the first LOD state. Uh, and this is an enemy, so you're gonna be spending the majority of your time up close and personal to this. So I'm gonna say LOD one, we'll say about that far. So when he's like a room away, he loses some detail. If he's a couple rooms away, he almost looks like a stick man. And just to get a good idea of how this looks, let's bring him outside so you can see as I back off the camera, you can see here, like, you don't really see a difference. You know what I'm saying? He's in LOD. Okay, now you finally can. But in the LOD one state from the zero state, as long as you're further away, you're not losing any detail that you can see really. So you can play around this, obviously. There's also a crossfade setting, although I've never used it before. I believe it's supposed to cross blend between these states. But yeah, depending on how complex the object is, you can get away with something uh, a lot less in terms of detail. Like we go back to my example uh, screenshot here. This is a set of barrels some individual did online. Um, you can see, like you really can't see that much of a difference between LOD zero and LOD one, even if you're really close. Now imagine being further away, uh, like you could really get away with LOD three uh, and even four quite easily if you're further away and it would not impact the scene that much at all. So this is very handy if you're using uh, assets from the asset store. I find a lot of times um, some of these aren't optimized. Uh, some of them are, but this just gives you some more control and agency in what you can do uh, to make your scene more optimized. So again, if you don't have the skill set uh, or the confidence to do so yourself, there are tools to help you do this. All right, before we move on, one last note in LODs. There is one other form of LOD, and to my knowledge, at the time of this video, Unity does not support it in Engine, but there are tools to do it. They're referred to in the industry as imposters. And basically what an imposter is, is just a very fancy billboard. So it's an image instead of a model that will take an original, uh, basically 360 grouping of images of the model. And depending on where you're standing in the world in respect to this image, it will give you one of the image snapshots it's taken. A good imposter system can even do this with lighting. So it basically will save the lighting effect of the model when it takes a snapshot of this model. And then it will look just like the model uh, to you, depending on where you're standing in the world. So you want to use this ideally uh, to replace an LOD group section, like say like LOD two or three. Uh, this is usually what an asset would do. And then when you're standing very far away, you're not even rendering uh, and model anymore. You're just rendering a screenshot of a model. So in the screenshot I have here on screen, you're going to see the imposter has six tries. The original has 27,000 tries. So as you can imagine, that is a large chunk of stress off of rendering. So I've been playing around with a system like this in Nephilim for large buildings with very complex geometry. And uh, it has shown great optimization. Things like, you know, cathedrals or massive castles. You replace the actual castle with a silhouette or a screenshot of the castle. Uh, and then when you get close, the actual castle takes the place of the screenshot. So very good for stuff like that. Not necessary at all, but depending on what kind of game you're going for, it can be very helpful. So I just thought I would share that. If you guys want more information on imposters, I can talk about it in depth. Just let me know. But for now, I'm going to keep going. I want to get a few things out there on the table so you guys can have a few ways to optimize your scene. One very quick and easy one. Just want to make a note that real-time lighting is very expensive. So if you have lots of real-time lights in your scene, if there are real-time lights that are not in view currently, you should disable them. Real-time lighting has to constantly calculate the lights of objects that pass through it. 
So obviously this is going to be very taxing if you have a lot of them in your scene. You can actually go measure the effect of this right now by just dumping 20 real-time lights in your scene and just watch what happens to your FPS. So a quick one, if you are using real-time lights and the real-time lights are not in view of your player and are not impacting the player in any way right now, disable them until the player comes into view. A very easy way to go about this is to use a trigger system. So if a player passes through an area, you're basically activating all the things in the area that you want to activate. You could put lights inside of that. And then upon leaving said area, you can disable all the lights again. All right, let's quickly talk about draw calls and uh, batches as you see it. So basically a draw call is a call to the graphics API to draw an object, while a batch itself is a group of draw calls being drawn together. So basically, this number right here, you can see under my CPU, and you can get this one by the way, hitting stats right here. But you can see I have, it shows the tries that I'm looking at and the verts and also the batches. So you want to be careful uh, about your batches and you ideally don't want them to get too high. So we can combat this, by the way, you can see in the scene here, if I just go over, uh, there's a bunch of these walls here, right? And they're individual objects. So obviously this is going to be called individually amongst these calls. So we can do a few things to combat this, to reduce these, this number. So the first thing we can do to combat this is to use static batching, which I believe is on by default. To get to this, you go to your project settings and go to player, and you can see here static batching is on. What does static batching do? Well, it's basically draw call batching that combines meshes that don't move to reduce draw calls. So in your scene, if you have a bunch of, I believe too, you have to share the same material, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you have a bunch of walls in your scene around the area, Unity is basically gonna go ahead and combine those into one to reduce the number of calls. So this is going to use more CPU memory. So I'm not gonna talk about CPU and GPU bound yet, but just note that this is going to use more of your CPU. Now, if you want another option, you can go here, and I think this is available in Unity 6 only and higher, I could be wrong, but you see there's GPU resident drawer. And to get this, you have to go to your URP asset. So mine right here, I have all these uh, assets right here. You can see I have balanced high fidelity, but the one I'm using right now is high fidelity. And just to grab that, we can go over to the quality settings of your uh, project settings, click this asset right here, and then you can go there and grab that. You can go ahead now and go to the resident drawer and enable instance drawing. And it's gonna say a couple of things here. So batch rendering variants must be set to keep all to fix modify graphic settings and set batch render groups to keep all. Also rendering path must be set to forward plus for correct lighting and reflections. One or more entries in the render list is not set to this mode. So there's a couple of things you have to do here. And also so static batching is not recommended when using GPU draw submission modes. performance may improve if static batching is disabled. So the thing you wanna know about this is this is going to basically use your GPU instead now of the CPU and this will free up some CPU memory. So if we go back to project settings, as it suggests, we should go down to our player and we should disable static batching. Also note, don't actually change these settings when you're in play mode because they will become unchanged when you stop the game as mine just did. So if you disable static batching, go do it again, get out of here. Now let's go back into our project settings and then we can go to the graphic settings. Then we want to go down to the batch rendering group variants. It's really close to the top on our shader stripping. We want to go to that and change it to keep all as the warning message suggests. And then we need to go find our rendering path. How do we do that? We'll go to our asset, our graphics asset. Like we click this here. And then from our graphics asset, you can click the render list. And then we can do this and change the render from forward to forward plus. <clears throat> I believe this is only available in Unity 6 to my knowledge. So if you have 22 or lower, I don't think you can do this. Now we can tick GPU uh, occlusion calling, and then we can go back to the project settings. And if you've upgraded to Unity 6, you're probably gonna have to go to graphics and come down here and untick render graph disabled. Uh, if you started the project Unity 6, this probably won't need to be ticked. You can close this out and now all should be working as all intended. Right. All right, one of the last options you can do to combat having more batches or draw calls is to basically combine meshes. And again, you can do this by opening up a tool like Blender and doing it yourself, or you can use one of the mesh combining tools on the asset shop. Uh, these work very well. I have used one and still use one very extensively and I will show it on screen right now. Basically what this will do is you can take meshes in the scene, combine them obviously, and then because it's just one singular mesh, it's going to reduce the amount of calls needed to draw that mesh. Instead of having 10 individual meshes, it's just the one now. But keep in mind, you have to be careful when you choose to do this because now if you have, for example, 
instead of 10 uh, small meshes, you have one large mesh, then this large mesh can't be broken down and hidden into different pieces using culling. So for example, if you had uh, a massive room all as one mesh versus having say 25 individual walls, then when I pass through and peek into that room, if you have them as individual meshes, you could maybe perhaps render four or five of the walls because I can see them through a hole. But if they're now all one big massive mesh, you have to render the whole room. What I'm trying to say is that there's no one size fits all for optimization. You have to choose the best technique depending on how your map is laid out and how the area is. And you'll get that knowledge from just messing around and kind of attempting things and measuring how much performance you have. Another tip to never measure your performance in the editor if you can help it. Always do builds. Uh, let the build have the final say. The editor can give you a pretty good idea sometimes, but you know there's a lot of stuff going on in the editor that would mess with your overall performance as opposed to if you were just running it within an actual build of the game. So lastly, before I leave, how do we know when to use each technique? Well, something like LODs can be used pretty much all the time. Uh, the same can be said for occlusion calling. Those are two pretty safe bets. You want to use those pretty much all the time. Now, if you're choosing between static batching or your GPU instancing slash like resident drawer, what you want to do is figure out where in your game uh, or what in your game is kind of lagging behind in terms of what is bound between your CPU or your GPU. And how can you know that? Well, you can figure this out by using the profiler. And if you want me to do a video on that, it will require a video on its own. Let me know. But there are plenty of resources out there on this. So I encourage you just to check it out yourself and look it up. But I can't cover it. Basically, you want to figure out what is lagging behind because constantly in your game, I'm going to oversimplify this, your CPU is constantly talking to your GPU and vice versa. So sometimes your CPU has to wait on your GPU to finish drawing the frame. And sometimes your GPU has to wait on your CPU. So you want to basically even out the load so it runs as smoothly as possible. And if you find that your CPU is doing too much, well, maybe you should start using GPU instancing to start putting some of the load on your GPU. And if for some reason the reverse is true, well, maybe you should consider using static batching instead of the GPU instancing. But I also want to end with this most important note. Don't feel like you need to feel overwhelmed or stressed out. I know I've thrown a lot of information at you today, but basically this video was to more or less give you a, an area to explore. Don't feel like you need to figure this all out at once. Just take some time, enjoy the process, and try implementing some of the things I've shown today. And take some time to actually research the documentation and read about these things to determine which one is better for you. It's very hard to condense all of this subject matter in a 20 minute video because honestly, I could talk about most of these topics as a 20 minute video alone and still cover a lot more about them. So if any optimization gods are watching and I've missed a couple of details that you would totally put in the video, please leave a comment down below. If you feel as though I've missed something important and you want to add to that, please put a comment down below. If it's very important, I'll very likely pin it or cover it in another video. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a very lovely weekend. A massive thank you to my patrons. It is because of each and every one of you I get to keep doing this. Thank you to everyone who likes the video, who comments, and who purchases stuff on our asset store. Genuinely, just because of all of you, we get to keep going. So I will see you guys in the next video. We're going to get back to some actual coding now, get back to some core features like leveling up and all that stuff. Uh, we're going to come back and revisit this stuff if ever you guys want me to or if you want another topic covered. Like if you want me to cover any of the things I talk about in this video more extensively, please request it. And I will give a full formal video on just one of those subjects. Like for example, we could talk about GPU instancing versus static batching for a whole video if you want to. All right, guys, at this point, I am rambling. I will see you all next week.